what? Nothing. Just check and see if you're awake. I'm awake. I'm ready, and I'm waiting. She just left. Okay. Give it ten minutes. <laughs> ten minutes? No way. I'll go nail him now. Kim, you've never done this kind of thing before. It's a hundred thousand dollar claim. I got you the job. If you blow it, I get the blame. Kim, you gotta listen up. It's what I needed, just what I needed. If it didn't one thing with cars, it's another. I just had the carburetor, whatever that is, rebuilt, and now I got a flat tire. Could that be connected? Oh, I'm sorry. Look, I just got a flat tire, and I'm on my way to a modeling appointment, and I'm gonna be late. Can I go in, use your phone, call the service guy, have him come out, fix my tire? Why don't you change it yourself? I'd, uh, I'd do it for you, only I, I hurt my neck. I uh, hurt my back, too. Oh, yeah. that's too bad. You're, uh, you're a model, right? Mm-hmm. Uh... Hmm. Hell, but men are dumb. Okay, you just show me what to do, because if I'm told what to do, I can do mostly anything. Yeah? Well, that's quite a thought. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it is. You're gonna need a jack, lug wrench, too. Mm -hmm. It's pretty complicated, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, just stand back. Be a lot easier. I'll just do it for you. Oh, are you sure? What about your back and your neck and all? Well, sometimes for a lady, you gotta make a little sacrifice, huh? Well, I think a sight like that's enough to cure a fellow more than whiplash. Say she used to be a topless dancer? She wasn't much use at that. Oh, well, well, everybody likes different things. She can't dance. She doesn't have any rhythm. Matter of fact. Oh, well, so that's that. What else you got, Posey? Tom, get me a pack of cigarettes. Well, I think we ought to draw a line under the Campbell account, Clyde. We haven't come up with anything in a month, more. I know how long we've been taking their money, Posey. Told them when they came to me the murder cases were slow movers. It's been two years since somebody shot the Campbells. Houston Police Department haven't come up with Diddley. I spoke with Dan Halsey at the police department the other day. They're waiting for the estate to get settled, see where the money goes. Halsey couldn't find his butt with a flashlight. I, I thought you were onto this fellow, the boyfriend of Cindy Campbell. What's his name? David West. He gave Cindy her alibi. Where's coffee? You didn't ask for coffee, Clyde. No problem, I'll get it. Campbell had some pretty scuzzy clients in his line of lawyering, Clyde. Uh, could have been one of them. Not what the family thought. They think their little sister Cindy did it. They think she killed her own parents with her two kids right there in the room? That's why they hired us. Oh, we can't get anywhere near Cindy. She's a recluse. Uh, never comes out. Well, Cindy's holed up. Is, is this David West holed up with her? Uh-uh, they split up. You could try Kim on it. She's kind of flaky, you know, but she's plenty smart. His name is David West. This could be good. He's some kind of gun freak, you know, a survivalist into that bodybuilder macho stuff. I'm gonna create a whole new style just for this gig. Yes. He won't know what hit him. I don't know. I don't like the sounds of this guy. I mean, what's he supposed to have done? Murdered somebody? His ex-girlfriend's parents got blown away. Could have been anybody. Maybe even a professional hit. They just think he knows something about it. Once I fix my hair, it'll be perfect.
right, it's the White House. Uh, he's not home, so you might have to wait a while. Now remember, Kim, it was me who suggested you for this. So don't be too weird. You have to remember everything so that it doesn't trip you up later. Keep to the facts about yourself as much as you can. Where you were born, what your father does, all that. Don't... Don't fantasize. <laughs> You can tell them about being in the Navy, you can tell them about being an air traffic controller, and you can tell them about the topless dancing and about the time you were raped if you have to. I don't want to do that. Why would I want to do that? Yeah, well, chances are, Kim... Call me Teresa. Teresa McNeil. Yeah, right, Teresa. Chances are he's going to come on to you, right? So you're going to want to keep him off without completely chilling him. Well, you know I know how to do that. Yeah. Okay, but David West might not be as easygoing as I am. So, something like what happened can explain why you're not hot to trot. Last guy I told about that dropped me like a stone. Don't worry, Tom. Teresa McNeil can take care of herself. How is she? Think Clyde will blame me if she blows it? If she blows it, what Clyde thinks will be the least of our problems. She's on her own out there. She'll be OK. I was in the Navy for four years before this. Who are you now? Yes, I was. That's what brought me to Texas. Corpus Christi, mainly. Yeah, it's a fun town. Air traffic controller. <laughs> yep. Yep, I was one of those. Yeah, only woman among 50 guys. <laughs> you better believe I got to know men. No, I'm not anti-men. I just, I'm tired of these add water and stir relationships. Love. <gasps> love, 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 love. Love, have I ever been in love? It's kind of a personal question, don't you think, right off the bat? No, I'll answer it. I'm just saying it's kind of personal. No, I've never been in love. I love people, but in love, no. What's the difference? I don't know, but I bet you when it happens, you sure can tell. You know when he'll be back? I, I don't think I know any Charlie. No? Do you live here? <laughs> yeah, I live here. Charlie doesn't. Oh. This is 3031 Franklin. That's right. Damn, I must have got the address wrong. Charlie Lockwood? <laughs> I never heard of him. This is a real drag. I drove all the way across Houston. You have a phone? <laughs> I think so. Yeah, can I come in and use it? Maybe save myself a wasted trip? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm here now. Yeah. Well, are you sure you gave me the address right? I'm telling you, no. Never heard of Charlie Lockwood. No. All right. It's 555-8624. Uh, all right. Well, I can't sit here all night. Yeah, bye. So, uh, any luck with Chuck? <laughs> I tell you, making a decent connection is a real hassle these days. 
It was no problem at all when I was down in Corpus Christi. Hmm. Great place. Yeah. Is this yours? Oh, no. Uh, I just got a room here. The guy that owns it, it's his trip. He's some kind of Vietnam vet? <laughs> he wishes. He's into the whole, um, I don't know, he's just into thinking about all that kind of stuff. <laughs> so, uh, what are you trying to score? Weed. They're gonna call me back if they can locate Charlie. You mind if I wait here? I don't know. <laughs> but, um, I gotta go out in a minute. I gotta hook up with Dave. Oh, hey, I don't want to hold you up. Oh, no. Listen, if you're, uh, if you're looking to score, I can probably put you in touch with somebody. How much you want to buy? <laughs> Depends on the price. <laughs> of course it does. <laughs> so, um, you want to come with me? No hassles, right? No, no hassles, right. Geez, I'm just going to hook up with Dave for his birthday. Oh, hey, that's great. You can say I'm his present. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, right. Just a kid. Yeah, well, I left St. Louis when I was 17. Ran away. Joined the Navy so I could get taken care of. So what do you do now? Oh, I'm kind of between gigs, as they say in showbiz. I live with my sister Sammy and her old man. My overhead's pretty low. You in love with anybody? It's kind of a personal question, isn't it? I prefer that I ask you impersonal questions. Like, uh... Can you give me a ride home? What, you don't have a car? Well, I have a Trans Am. It's got a busted transmission. I got a job that doesn't pay enough for an oil change. Yeah? Well, maybe your luck's about to change. <sighs> I don't believe in luck. Hey, how about that? Neither do I. I have to talk to Steve, OK? You don't believe in luck. I just think everything that goes to the trouble of happening is inevitable. I mean, you come up to something in your life, some big decision you know is going to alter everything, and you think you made a choice. And then when you look back on it, you see you did the only thing you could have done. So everything's decided in advance? That's what you're saying? It's not much fun? Well, when you read a book, see a movie, everything's decided in advance. It's fun while you're finding out. Hey, turn here. Drive like I think. I'm a great driver. That's what I said. So how come you left home when you're so young? I was a difficult kid. My father kept getting on my case. Oh, tell me about it. Well, I remember the night I left. I was terrified, but I kind of got myself backed into a place I couldn't get out of, you know? I'm like that. Anyway, he was downstairs watching television, 60 minutes it was. And I brought my bags down one at a time. I pile them in front of the front door. You know, last of all, I go get my Snoopy dog. I stick him right on top of the pile. I keep thinking he's going to turn around, you know, and see it. Say, Kim, don't go. Kim? He 
he always call me by my middle name? Kimberly, I hate it. Oh, well, that's probably why. Probably. Anyways, he never did turn around. Not even when the taxi came, he just kept watching 60 minutes. Hey, it's hard going up against Andy Rooney. <laughs> this is my street. Here? There you are, you're free to go. So what's this all about? What's this all about? Haven't you ever picked up a girl in a bar before? I just said it was you who picked me up. So are you saying that's never happened to you? Not often enough to know it doesn't feel like this. I'm not into these just add water and stir relationships. Neither am I. Am I going to see you again? How about same time, same place tomorrow night? Oh, you'll have to be more straightforward, Teresa, if this relationship's going to work. Do you have to sleep with him or anything? Undercover doesn't mean you have to get under the covers. Yeah, but don't you have to, like, taunt him with your body until he Shut confesses? Who says he has anything to confess? Well, how come they're paying you to date him, then? I'm not dating him. I thought you were seeing him tomorrow night. Mm-hmm. Same time, same place. <laughs> Sounds like a duck to me. Now, come on, Kim. Is he cute? Ask Teresa McNeil. Who's Teresa McNeil? That's the name I'm using. Now, wait a minute. I thought you were calling yourself, who's that girl? Denise something? That girl from the insurance scam? Denise Donnelly was totally helpless. She couldn't change a flat tire. Denise Donnelly is not the type David West would be interested in. What is the type David West would be interested in? Well, now there's the trick, Sammy. First, I have to find that out. Then, I have to become her. Kim? Kim Paris! Billy Curtis! Corpus Christi? Watch Commander's office. Don't you remember? Hey, it's me. Hey, we went out and got drunk that night. We had a great time. You remember Billy Curtis? Would you get your hands off me, huh? I mean, it's enough, you know? You all right? Yeah, the guy just grabbed me. Come hey, on, let's wait go. a minute. I think a minute would be too long. I just wanted to say hello, okay? Consider it said. Yeah. Yeah. Don't put it out of your mind. Let him deal with it. Maybe I overreacted. Don't apologize for how you feel. Don't, don't look for trouble, but don't walk away. Some people see something they don't like and they say that's wrong and they look down at their feet and shuffle them around and walk away. I don't do that. You're a pretty tough dude then, huh? I just see things through. I need a beer. Can I have a beer? The reason that I was late is that Sonny, my sister Sammy's husband, he's kind of strict. I couldn't tell him I was coming to see you. No, why is he strict with you? You're not his wife. He's possessive. You know, it's that family kind of thing. Sounds like he's mafia. You must be clairvoyant. He is kind of mixed up in that kind of thing. Does that bother you? I had a girlfriend, a 
His father was a, a lawyer for all kinds of lowlifes. He didn't like Cindy going out or having a life of her own. Just like your, your sister's husband, Sonny. Well, he was her father. Maybe he cared about her. Yeah. Maybe. Sonny's not that bad. Sometimes it helps to have a man look after you. How does your friend and her father get on now? He got killed in a car crash, mother too. Oh. So, things worked out just fine. Oh, that's awful. The Campbells were nicer people, Dad. David, what a terrible thing to say. Yeah, it is. The Campbells were terrible people. All of their kids got severely screwed up by him. Even your friend? What was her name? Cindy? Oh, especially Cindy. Cindy almost didn't make it. Was she in the car when it happened? No. No, I was with her when she got the news. Are you and she still close? No. No, after Cindy lost her parents, things changed. We don't see each other anymore. It's all in the past. I want you to know that. Hey, if you say so. No. I want you to believe me. I do. I do believe you. to be straight between us, Teresa. You may have to find your own way home, okay? Oh, Now, remember, right. you and Sonny are only married six months. His name is Sonny? Yeah, he's very old-fashioned about stuff. What does he care whether my husband's old-fashioned or not? I told David he won't let me get calls from guys because I don't want him to have my telephone number and know that we live in the same area. I told him I live all the way across the town. What happens if you run into him at the laundromat? I'm going to take our clothes in one of those places where they do them for you, and then I'm going to put it on my expense account. You can do that? You cover costs, kid. Now, remember, don't blow it, okay, because my name is yeah. Teresa. You Teresa think I am so stupid McNeil. I can't remember her name. Hey, cut down the Texas draw, okay? You're supposed to be my older sister. I am not older than you. Don't get confused. It's just a cover story. I'm not the one who's getting confused. <laughs> So, how come you didn't run away from home and join the Navy? Couldn't stand all that yes sir, no sir stuff. Sammy was always daddy's favorite. He taught her how to play pool. Dad's a little hustler, huh? Amazing the way parents operate on kids and kids on each other. Seen a lot of those kind of games, putting one kid against the other. The dollar she makes. You're on. Do you mind? Two dollars. You're on. Oh, no, I put her off. She's really good. Daddy used to make us play all the time for money. Oh, I feel like I know him without ever having met him. Kim exaggerates everything. You still call her by your father's pet name. Suggest to me you haven't accepted Teresa for who she really is. Want a little bet on this one, Sammy? Mind your childhood. Five bucks a game, best of ten, loser breaks. It's what Daddy liked to bet. Shoot pool, big sister. You hustled me, didn't you? Well, kind of. You mind? Pretty smooth. <laughs> I like that. You can take care of Teresa, can yeah? you? Yeah. Now look over somebody else to do it for you. Is that how it was with Cindy? Something like that.
course, if you don't want to talk about it. David, I'm not ready for a physical thing. It's not you. It's something that happened. You don't have to explain. It's okay. You don't have to worry. I don't want what you don't want to give. Some place. You a survivalist or what? <laughs> well, I'm surviving so far. And that's enough for you. Hey, don't knock it till you try it. You go from home to the Navy to living with your sister. That's not taking too many chances. <laughs> and you too. I live every day like someone's sneaking up behind me. So I practice every day sneaking up behind them. Cheers. So were you very much in love with Cindy? Whoa, you don't give up, do you? No, sir. I created Cynthia. Or I tried to. I was in love with what she was going to become. Doesn't sound too loving. When I first met Cindy, she weighed about 200 pounds, had greasy hair, complexion like a glazed donut, and nose like Pinocchio. She hated herself. I didn't blame her. So why were you attracted to her? Because I could feel the pain coming off her in waves. She was like radioactive with it. And I was interested in why this ugly, fat chick was just so totally screwed up. Did you ask her? Sure. I said, how come a fat, ugly chick like you is so totally screwed up? What did she say? Well, she said a lot of things, but in the end, it all came down to one thing. Somebody was putting her down, and that person was Cindy. You said her father was terrible to her or something? Her mother wasn't much better. But you can't blame everything on your parents. It just doesn't solve your problems. I told her, quit complaining. You're just giving away your power to the past. So I got her to stop eating the crap she ate and got her to start exercising and reading books, you know, to clean out her mind and put her in touch with her gifts. She was a natural psychic. She didn't know it. She knew stuff before it happened, but she never figured why. I even got her to get her nose fixed, and uh, turned out pretty good. And were you in love with her then? I was trying to make her into somebody like you, but I just didn't have the blueprint. Well, there's only one of those, and I have it. Uh, no. David is a person of deep feelings and considerable sensitivity. He has expressed a remarkable degree of affection for me and indeed may be in the process of falling in love with me. Now listen, this is the one time, first and last, I'm telling you. This client isn't paying for you to get jugged up every night with some sleazeball that's so hot the crowd he tells you he loves you. If you think he's keeping something hidden about the Campbell killings, that's one thing. But I don't want to hear anything more about this dear Abby soap opera. Got to hell with them and their agency. I survive before this, I'll survive after it. They're all so damn scared of the old Tolio. They all think they're the ones who know how to handle this. I am the only one who could have got this close to David. Don't they get that? You love it. You just love it. All this play acting, this undercover USA. What is your problem? You love making up lies. You love believing them. You're supposed to be my friend. I don't need this from you. I am your friend. And I know you, which is more than you do right now. You're getting involved with this creep, aren't you? How do you know he's a creep? You hustled him at pool, that's what you know. You don't know what it's like being somebody else. Being seen as somebody else, feeling like somebody else. 
Answer the question, Kim. You promised to call me Teresa. Answer the question, Teresa. That's the way it works for me, and it's working. I'm getting close to him. You slept with him yet? No, I haven't. And he hasn't pushed me either. He... Oh, he respects you. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I think he does. Oh, sweet. Coming, did you? I think that sort of thing sucks. I'm not going to hurt you. How do I know that? Why? Why do you think it might hurt you? I... It's not you. Well, who is it? You scared me, okay? Fine. All right, you scared me. There's something you're not telling me, Teresa. You can tell me anything. About a year ago, I was raped. It's partly my fault. I ran out of gas and I was walking to get some, and a car came by. It was kind of in the country. Two guys were in it. They asked me if I wanted a lift. I said no. They said it was a couple of miles to the next gas station. He said, what's the matter? Don't you trust us? I said it wasn't that, but I'd walk anyway. I was too close to the car. He grabbed my wrist and they drove off. I had to run alongside. After a bit, I fell down. They stopped the car, pulled me inside. Was it your fault? I don't know. Dumb of me. Thrown out of gas. Yeah. I'm always doing dumb things like that. Rape isn't a punishment for running out of gas, Teresa. Not even in Texas.
Tuna melt on rye and some iced tea. The money. Come it. The money's in my coat. I'm buying. Well, well. If it ain't Sam Spade, come a slumming in his 500 buck threads. Tell me, Posey, how is the private enterprise law enforcement business? Well, it's up to taking you to lunch, Halsey. Yeah? Well, ain't that nice. <laughs> oh, I can't help it, Posey. I'm just not very partial to private detectives. <laughs> that includes me? Oh, no. You know I got a little soft spot in my heart for you, Posey. I guess it's some kind of that name you had to grow up with. Oh, Posey, Posey. <laughs> God, how come you never changed it? Play the card you get, Dan. Play the card you get. No, don't give me that ball. Next thing you tell me is it made a man out of it. Oh, no. Wouldn't go that far. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, we've been working on a Campbell case, I suppose you heard, on behalf of the family. <laughs> What's that costing us, sir? Well, they thought the Houston Police Department had kind of quit on Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get a guy that that many people got a motive for killing, you either get lucky or you get slow. Yeah. Well, we're uh, working the David West angle. David West? Hmm. Good luck, Posey. I spent a long time trying to break that alibi. Yeah, well, we've uh, got a girl next to her. Her name is Kim Paris. She's, well, well, she's kind of flaky, but she's got her hooks into West. The only thing is, Clyde doesn't take her seriously. So? Well, you know the case. You know West. I thought maybe you could talk to her, see if you could figure out what she's got. She's kind of exposed out there. What's in it for me? Apple pie. A la mode? One scoop. One scoop. All right, All right. bring her by. Uh, Louise? Hey, now, I recommended you with the agents. You're gonna have to tell me if you're listen, getting anywhere. Listen, I got a great idea. David is a believer in psychics. I've seen he was psychic. Never mind about says, the psychic. Okay? Just tell listen, me if you're getting anywhere. Will you just listen to me, Tom? Okay. I'm gonna tell David that I've had this dream, like he's in danger, you know? And then the next time that I go and pick him up, you drive by and you fire a gun. Not at us, but I mean, like, in the air, okay? And then he'll think, I have it. Really have it. This is crazy. This, this is, this is really crazy. You didn't put this in your report, did you? Hey, it's just an idea. I'm just trying to be creative. That sounds like you're desperate to me. Maybe I should be taping it. Teresa! David! It's David. You play along with me, all right? Hi! How are you? Well, hey, look at you. I look awful. You do not. This is my brother-in-law, Sonny. Well, hello, Sonny. Teresa told me about you. Oh, yeah? Yeah, she mentioned you. Great. Hey, how about you and your wife having dinner some night with me and Teresa over at my place? Oh, Sammy would love that. You know how she loves to go out, Sammy. I fixed pretty good Mongolian lamb. How about Saturday? Saturday? Uh, I think Saturday would be fine. Know. I'll work on him. Saturday. Good. Nice to meet you. Mm. Saturday it is. Hi, David. See you Saturday. Damn it, you are careless. Can we should not have been out here. Well, I thought that worked out pretty good, Sonny. What is this brother-in-law crap? That's what I told him, why I can't invite him to my house. I live with this pig of a brother-in-law, Sonny. You'll be perfect, No, huh? no, no, I am absolutely not going to dinner pretending to be some hood. You gonna blow my Kim? cover, Tom? Kim? Is that what you want, huh? If I tell Clyde you can't pull it off, he won't let you fetch his cigarettes anymore. <laughs> Kim? Don't forget, Sammy, you're different when you're around, Sonny. You're quiet, you're subdued. Where'd you come up with this mafia? What was the idea of that? What? Didn't you say that the Campbell murders were like, you know, 
executions like professional? Yeah. Okay, so maybe Cindy had somebody hire some hitmen. Maybe David is the one who did the hiring. Did you ever think of that? It's crazy. It's Good. absolutely crazy. You crazy, Kim. Them. Teresa, Teresa, you gotta remember to call her Teresa. Hey, would you watch your mouth when you're talking to me? You're gonna end up with cement shoes. <laughs> this is never gonna work, Kim. I, I mean, it. Teresa, this is never gonna work. <laughs> no. I don't believe in free will. I mean, it looks like you have a choice, but when you examine it, really examine it, you see that one thing leads to another, the only way it could have. I mean, all history's inevitable, because it goes to the trouble of happening. May sound kind of fatalist. Sounds dumb. That's what it sounds like. Are oh, you believe in free will, then? Oh, nothing's free, including this dinner. Now, what price do you see yourself paying for this dinner? Well, I gotta sit here and listen to you go on about all this stuff you don't know nothing about. Why don't you two broads go pout or something? Sonny. Go on, beat it. You certainly have a way with the ladies, Sonny. West, don't use sarcasm with me. Ain't gonna work. What I want to know about is what you have in mind with my sister-in-law. I intend to marry Teresa. Now, I respect your position, your feelings, and how you're protective about her, but I'm gonna take care of her. Now, this house is my property, and I can fix it up and get a very good price. Teresa and me didn't have any choice but to meet each other, and we have no choice but to keep on knowing each other. I don't know how it is with you and Sammy, but that's how it is with Teresa and me. We'll be out in the car, okay? Oh, and thank you, David. Good night. Teresa will join us in a moment. That guy's nuts. He did it. I really think he did it. Uh-uh. No way. What do you mean, no way? Oh, he's out to lunch, all right, but not that way. Want to know what he told me? What? He wants to marry her. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. You want to know what else? What? They have no choice, he says. What? No choice. David, shouldn't you have asked me, well, spoken to me before you spoke to him? I don't think I did anything wrong. I love you, Teresa. I know, but what I'm saying is, shouldn't you have... Do you? Do you really know? Do you really know I love you? I want to marry you. When I have to, I can get things done. I do not intend to deliver blueprints for the rest of my life. Take this house, fix it up, and sell it, and we can do whatever we want to do with the money. Have a life, a family, you and me. He asked me to marry him, Sammy. And that's something. I mean, a lot of guys have hit on me. But the first time I get the white picket fence proposal, I'm pretending to be somebody else. Kim, why don't you just forget this whole thing? What? Tell him I changed my name to Kim Paris and you got divorced from Sonny. And... You don't have to tell him anything. Nothing. We could just split. I'm not exactly doing great here. Mm. You're getting serious about this guy, aren't you, Kim? Aren't you? Kim isn't. I'm not so sure about Teresa. Watch it. 
know where Sergeant Halsey is? Halsey. Halsey, he's banging on that typewriter over there. That's right, you're quite welcome. Piece of junk. Sergeant Halsey, Kim Paris from the Clyde Wilson Agency. How do you want me, sitting, standing? I don't know if I want you at all. How much more are you going to get from these guys? All right. All right. What do you got on David West? I think he knows a lot about Cindy Campbell and about her parents. Well, no kidding. That couldn't be because he was shacked up with her for two years, now could he? He lied to me about the way the Campbells were killed. He said they were better people dead. Oh, did, did he tell you who shot him? No. No, he didn't say well, what do you like think? That. What, what, what do you think? Me? Yeah, you, Miss Private Eye. What is your uh, professional opinion? I don't know. I don't think that David well, had... Well, let me ask you this. How long you been shacked up with David West? I'm not shacked up with David West. Uh, I hear tell that he wants to marry you. Now, why would a weirdo like David West want to marry you, Miss Perry? I think he's in love with me. Oh, in love? Oh, well, <laughs> now I see. Uh, in order to prove his love to you, he's going to confess to the Campbell murders. Is that it? Okay, okay, wait, 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 wait. Okay, okay. So, so he's uh, he's not sleeping with you. <laughs> You're not sleeping with him. Why not? Because I don't want to. Oh, and what does he have to say about that? Wait, wait, wait. Has he got you pegged for some kind of virgin or something? I don't know why you're talking to me like this. Oh, you don't? No. Well, I'll tell you why, darling. Because I'm a cop. And I don't trust private detectives in general. And I don't trust Clyde Wilson in particular. And I especially don't like it when he sticks some bimbo out on the street who thinks that all she has to do is flash a little skin and she can get a confession out of every punk that she comes across. Go, go. Yeah. Oh, that'll teach her, Dan. Coming in trying to cooperate with the police. Butt out. Hey. Hey. You don't need this stinking job. I mean, it's Looney Tunes. You don't even know what your name is. Quit the case. Well, what am I going to do about David? Well, I can't just run out on him. Run out on him? What is the matter with you, Kim? You'd be doing him 50 different kinds of a favor if you ran out on him. You've been lying to that boy since the day you met him. That's not true. It's not all true. God, son. What am I going to do? How about telling him the truth, Kim? What'd be wrong with that? I talked to a real estate lady about the house. She said with a little fixing up, I could get maybe 60, 65 grand for it. Hey, what's wrong? Look at me. Talk to me. You can talk to me. David, I have to go away for a while. I think we should. I think we should go to Mexico, where the peso is. We could live there good a long time. I know guys have done no, that. I mean on my own. Why do you have to do that? I just do. I have to get things straight. What's not straight? Is this about Cindy? I told you there's nothing between Cindy and me. It is over. Oh, trust me. There are a lot of things I want to talk to you about and have you understand. But I need you to, you know, make some kind of a commitment. No, I can't. Not now, not yet. I need time. Well, what if you go away and I never hear from you again? You will. I wouldn't do that. I love you, Teresa. Why do you have to go away? David, you have to believe me. I'm all confused about things. My feelings, who I am, all kinds of things. I gotta get things straight. I just I have to. Right. 
But when you're figuring all this out, just remember I love you. And I love you. Oh, then why do you have to go away? I don't know. Tell him? I said... I said that I loved him, Sammy. I couldn't help myself. Well, you better start, Kim. Because you got company. And I don't think they're here to help you. So how come all of a sudden this jerk believes me? Well, Sergeant Halsey was just testing you first time. No, he Kim. wasn't testing me. He was insulting me, and he was enjoying it. Yeah, uh, I was a little rough on you, Miss Paris. Just one of those bad days, you know? Thing is, Kim, you're the best thing they've got. The Campbell case has been on hold. No such thing. We've been waiting for the Campbell will to be probated. Now, as soon as they divide up the estate, we'll follow the money, see if any of it goes to David West. Which could take a year or more. In the meantime, you are the only thing they've got, no matter what Sergeant Halsey says. And the reason he's here now is that he can set you up with the wire, see what you can get out of David. You want me to record him? Well, as I recall, you thought that you could get West to talk. Well, you know, on account of him being in love with you and you never having slept with him. Kim. Don't let him talk to you that way. Most likely be a waste of your time and mine, too. Uh, unless you really got something going with this guy. Bush, you're the only one who'd know about that. So, do you or don't you? Tell me you do. I'll believe you. Yeah, I got something going. Okay, now you gotta push both of these down, Fortress. Mm -hmm. Are you listening to me? You gotta push both of them down, all right? Right here. You gotta make sure the microphone stays in the clear. All right, all right, let's go. Say something. Sergeant Halsey is a pig. How's that? Repeating, Sergeant Halsey is a pig. All right, let's go. Come on. Now, remember, it's no good if you do all the talking. He can't just sit there and yes and no you. You understand? It's got to it's gotta come out of his mouth. It's got to be in his words. Of course. What, do you think I'm trying to frame him? Just explaining. Kim, we'll be here. Just in case. In case of what? I don't have anything to fear from David. He's the one that's in danger. after this is over. This is all. Are you guys hanging in? Hanging in, Sergeant. Hanging in.
Hey, Dave. What's the idea behind all that stuff you're doing? I mean, I see these old Chinese guys on the TV going after it, and they just look like they're trying to hack their way through some kind of imaginary jungle. That's exactly it, Steve. System for getting through the jungle. And this teacher. Stay in the now, the big now. No past, no future. That's how you survive in the jungle. Wow, man, it's pretty deep. I write fortune cookies. Hey, Teresa. Teresa. You've been here, man. It was a real learning experience. It's so good to see you. I didn't know when you get it straightened out. David, we have to talk. What's wrong? <laughs> Something big now, man. Jimmy. Hey, man. Signal's clean. Okay, good. What's wrong? Tell me what it is. David, why did you lie to me? What about? About Cindy's parents. They weren't killed in a car accident. How were they killed? They were shot in their bed in front of their grandchildren, shot three times each by two people who've never been arrested. She's got some guts. How did you find that out? I checked in the newspapers. It took a lot of looking, but it was there. Oh, what made you do that, Teresa? I didn't believe what you told me. Why? Because you lied to me. How'd you know I lied to you? I don't know how I knew. I can't explain everything like you can. I don't know. There's just something I could feel. I never thought I'd find out that they'd been murdered. The way they died doesn't change the fact that they deserve to. I didn't lie about that. I don't care about them. I don't know them. It's you I know. Now, you say you want us to be together. You say you want me to trust you. How is that going to happen if you're going to lie to me about something like that? You have really good instincts, don't you? I mean, I kept asking myself why you went on and on about Cindy. I mean, you weren't picking up any kind of interest from me. We've become very close, David. Now, there was something, and I could sense it. I thought it was about you and Cindy. I knew you weren't telling me everything about her. I thought maybe you're still involved with her, oh, maybe... No. Then what was it? What made you tell me that lie? You don't have to lie to me, David. Cindy got a bad deal. A real bad deal. By the time I met her, she was all lost and gone to hell. And I went there, too, to try and bring her back. Sounds kind of melodramatic, doesn't it? I went to hell to bring her back. But it's the truth. Where Cindy lived was hell. Her father. Had been molesting her since she was a child. And the family knew and nobody did anything. I guess while, while he was doing it to Cindy, he wasn't doing it to them. I mean, you'd think they'd be on her side, but they hated her. And she hated herself. She blamed herself. like when you ran out of gas. Oh, I get her to agree to stop seeing him, but there was always some excuse why she couldn't stop. She just lie there. So what can I do? What can I do? Oh, do you have any idea how angry that can make you when somebody you care about is dying and they won't try to get well, won't even want to get well? Why didn't you leave her? I couldn't do that, Teresa. When you go into something like that, you have to see it through. I told you I was that way. When I commit, it's the whole way. But you got her to stop. Stop with her father, right? Right? Well, I took away from all that, but... Oh, I didn't take all that away from her, you see. It gets to be a part of you. How you feel, how you are. Sydney never got away from the way she felt. She put it on to me, you know what I'm saying? I 
come to me. She didn't want me to punish her. I would, and, uh, and then I'd, I'd have to forgive her. Well, I got a picture in here that comes into my head. Like somebody switched on a light. And I can see her. And I can see him doing what he wants, anything he wants. Oh. You know what I'm saying, don't Why you? Why get her out of there? You've never been any place. You just didn't know who you were, Teresa. David, I think you should leave. I did. I did leave. I got out. She got out. We had to. You understand that, don't you, Teresa? Hey, y'all, I got some of my nose candy. I see? Get out! Get out, get man! Stop me some blood, man! Get out. Where are you going? I have to get out. It's because of what I told you, isn't it? You didn't tell me anything. It's about Cindy and me, and you hate me because... I hate you, David. Oh, but you don't love me. You don't... I can see it in your face. You don't know me. You don't know what's in my face. Cindy, wait a minute. You want me to trust you? I want you to trust me. That's why I told you. It doesn't matter about trust. Who am I that you should want me to trust you? You're Teresa. And I love you. Teresa, she's chickened out. Teresa, wait. The broad is Teresa. chickened out. Where are you going? I don't care about Sydney. I don't care about me. Or us. I didn't you don't care that. about us. You asked me to tell you about Sydney, so I tell you, and all of a sudden you just don't want to know. David, let's call me. Wait. No. Where are you going? I think she's in trouble. Shh, shh. What are you waiting for? You sit your butt down. We've got to get her out of this. Listen, just listen. listen. He's in the car with I her. know he's I... in the car with her. Shut up. I didn't know what it was between you and Cindy. I I didn't I mean I didn't I didn't get it about the thing about her parents being killed and better dead in the car. It doesn't even matter because I'm just sorry for Cindy and for you. I'm sorry okay, for us. Teresa. And me. Teresa. I killed them. You shot her? It was the only thing I could do for her after everything else. She was still the same Cindy. She just looked different. She was chained to herself, her old self. I broke it. You. You yourself? Well, she couldn't. You couldn't expect her to. No, she couldn't. Well, I'll be. She did it. She did it. I told you. I told you. Tell me. Yes. Just tell me to be. Yeah. Yeah, tell it's going to be all right. It, it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. I have to go. No, I just don't go right no, now. No, come on, it's okay. I have to. I have to. I have to. 
think about everything. Okay. Jim. I can't believe I told you. But I love you. I couldn't have told you. I know. I know, but it's a lot, David. It's, it's a weight, and I have to let it, I have to let it sink in. It's going to drive you away. No, it isn't. I love you. I love you, too. Giving it to you. My life. You know that, don't you? DA's in with the grand jury playing the tape. Won't be long after that. Once they hear him say it, that's it. seen it done better yeah i think i can make a career out of it i think you could do just about anything you set your mind to since when did you start giving compliments to bimbos from private detective agencies hey hey hey, hey. you caught me on a bummer that first time my old lady walked out on me just a couple of days before i don't know the old lady but you made the right choice halsey well if kim is finished here i'm gonna bring her back to the office clyde wants in, to see in a minute in a minute hey you got your case ease up i really need to talk to you Thanks, Tom. We'll see you at the elevator. What is it, Halsey? You want to get together for drinks and discuss my prospects now that your old lady walked out on you? The DA wants you to see David again. With a wire on. 
You just said the grand jury indicted him. No question, got him cold. So? So? We can't indict Cindy, not with what he said on those tapes. But with what you have, you can get him to tell you the rest. Sure we can, and the second he gets a lawyer, he'll plea bargain his testimony against Cindy. Who bargain for what? We're not getting the needle. Two counts, capital, premeditated, foregain, homicide. Now that gets you the big ticket in Texas, honey. do it for the money. Hey, we don't know that. We don't know why he did it. All we know is what he told you, and most of what he told you, Cindy told him, and she lies about everything. We got no proof that her father ever laid a hand on her. You, uh... You never did see what little David did to those people, did you? We can get this thing on track, Dan. She's coming in to see me, and I'll explain everything she needs to know. Well, you gotta get it yeah, I understand. I, just so you understand, when the time comes, I want to make the announcement about the agency's involvement. Yeah, sure. Just make sure. Yeah, uh, it's, sure I'll, uh, I'll take care of this, and I know you take care of your part. Yeah, right, thank you. Thank you. Well, sit down. Take the weight off those lovely legs of yours. What do you want to see me about, Clyde? Oh, wanted to tell you, you did a hell of a job, and I'm real pleased. I'm pleased you're pleased, Clyde. Well, thing is, we got a little end or two left untied. Seems a need for David to really play Cindy at the scene of the crime. Before they bring either of them in. So they can get the death penalty for David. Well, yeah, they want to kill somebody for this, and... Cindy would be a hard one, being a woman and all, with kids. Law's kind of sexist that way. What if I won't do it? Hell, let's just talk, yeah? You do it. This is your case. It's not complete. It feels pretty complete to me. David fooled you, Kim. Had you thinking he was a pretty nice guy. What does this have to do with anything? Hell, you sounded more upset on those tapes than David did. Didn't even recognize you on it. I caught him, didn't I? Does it matter how I sounded? Well, not to me, not to the HPD, not to the DA, but how about to you, Kim? How about when you meet David in court and you're sitting there looking at him and those tapes are saying you love him? I had to say that. I don't love him. That's what you want to be sure about. Seems kind of to me like you fell for the guy. I mean, that's the way it sounded, listen to those tapes. <laughs> listen, I'll tell you what, Kim. I think you'd do yourself a power of hell if you went back in there, cold as ice, and tied a ribbon on this case. It sure would impress a hell out of just about everybody. Might even make you feel better about yourself. Well, I'll just have to see how much better about myself I want to feel. Yeah, now I want you guys ready. Why don't you go ahead and get in your cars, all right? How should she be doing? Did you call her? 
him yet? You know, um, we're gonna be right there. No more than 10 seconds away. You stay in public places. You don't go back to his place, that's a no-no. You give us a code, something you'll say that'll let us know you want to get out. We'll be there. You understand? Yeah, I understand. All right, just leave me alone. Right. Pretty long day for me, too. I'm going to see you. I thought we should talk. Yeah. I think we should do more than talk, Teresa. I'm not expecting sex, Teresa. I'm just... Just some nearness. Trick or treat, right? Oh, Kim. I don't want you to do this. You've done enough. More. He so much as makes a move towards me and the cops will be all over him. Cindy was. We want her exact location at the time of the shooting. Was she was she in the room? Was she waiting in the car? Did she offer him money? All that kind of thing. Now, if you think he's suspicious, if you think anything is wrong, you just say... I'll say, I don't want one of these just add water and stir relationships. That's a pretty good line. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Kim, one more thing. You don't go back to his place, no matter what. When you leave the restaurant, that's it. Whether he's told you about Cindy or not, that's it. You really care about me, don't you, Sergeant? I'm just doing my job. And my job is to see to it that this punk doesn't kill anybody else. You leave the restaurant. You turn into a liquor store. Say you need a pack of cigarettes. You get out of the car. Walk away. Don't look back. Don't look back. Public with me, David? Yeah, of course not. No. 
just hate this kind of pretentious dump. Do you care for anything from the bar before you order? We'll have a bottle of dry white wine, a Chardonnay. Very good, thank you. Well, hey, you're making decisions tonight. I like that. Ah, oh, that day today. You must have been scared when Cindy knew. Why? What was Cindy gonna do? I guess not. Her being there and all. Was she? Take it easy, Kim. Take it easy. It's really all right, is it? I mean, you've accepted it, that I did it. What was that you once said? Things are inevitable once they've gone through the trouble of happening? Right. Yes, right. I think I found my first disciple. Wasn't Cindy your first? Oh, no, Cindy never knew what I was talking about. She wasn't smart like you. She was smart enough to get you to do what she wanted. Something like that. Something as big as that's going to change your life. Nothing's going to be the same. You don't let anybody else make those decisions for you. You mean it was your idea? No, I'm saying... I did it as much for me as I did for her. I take responsibility for my actions, and if I ever have to live this life again, I got no complaints. It's my philosophy, stay in the now, no regrets. Yeah, but whose idea was it? Cindy begged me to do it, and I wanted to. And I saw it was the only thing that could set her free. So I made sure she was right there beside me. So it was hers as well. It was like I was her arm. I pulled the trigger. But she planned it. Girl's a genius. We got them both. And her kids didn't recognize her? I wish she'd run out the door and hide a mask on. I didn't know they were going to be there. When you start on something like that, you got nothing but nerve to see you through. I was in my soldier mode. You have no idea how it feels. To be able to talk about it. Did Cindy offer you any money? Yeah, that was a bit that really bugged me. How much? A lot. It bothered me a lot. I mean, how much money? Twenty-five thousand. Which just confused things. It made it not clear why I was doing it. I had to think about it. Keep things separate. How much did you get? Nothing. I didn't get any money. It's all tied up in the estate. I'm not going to touch it. I mean, it just makes things different. I didn't do it for the money. Anyway, the cops will be waiting for that. Money talks. I think I'll feel a lot better about myself if I forget about the money. You're right about this place. Let's get out of here. Where do you want to go? There's only one place for us now, David. Jimmy, where's the driver? He's right outside. Get him, get him, let's go. We're gonna stay right with her. I gotta get some cigarettes, I'm out. We'll stop at a liquor store on the way. Yeah. You know Frederick Beach? 
Well, he got blamed for all sorts of stuff, like being a Nazi philosopher. Well, he wasn't. He saw some things really clearly. He, he had this theory called the eternal return. He said you had to live your life and be willing to live it again, exactly the same, no changes. And that was the difference between truth and falsehood, heaven and hell. How oh, sometimes things make sense suddenly that you thought made sense before. Missed the liquor store. Yeah, next one. Well, you gotta have some in here. No, I don't. How can you tell you get a box of bananas? I just smoked them all, and I know what I have in there. Oh, wait a minute. You look. Move in closer. Driver, me. move in closer. Give I think you found the mic. Just give me your purse, Stanley. Give me it. Okay, okay. Here's your purse. Anything you say can be taken down and used as evidence in a court of law. Teresa! 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 You don't know her name, David. But it isn't Teresa. I do. Teresa! What? 